Now, the federal government on Friday scrapped the University of Queensland coronavirus vaccine trial after several false positive test results for HIV. To get more reaction, we're joined by Professor Sarah Palmer from the Westmead Institute Centre of Virus Research. Welcome, Professor. Was it the right decision to abandon the trial? Good morning, Tim. Yes, the University of Queensland's vaccine used a very innovative technology, and that's a molecular clamp technology. And this molecular clamp was made from an HIV protein. And the reason they included this molecular clamp is because um, it would actually stabilize the part of the coronavirus that they were trying to present to the body to um, promote an immune response to the coronavirus. Unfortunately, because this molecular clamp was made from an HIV protein, not only did the body uh, respond by developing antibodies to the um, coronavirus spike protein, which is very positive, it also developed antibodies to the HIV protein. And this caused um, people to have positive HIV tests. Even though they're not infected with HIV, they have a positive test for HIV. So that, is a, that was a bit of a problem for this, this, um, this vaccine. And so it, it, had, it was terminated due to this false positive um, for, HIV, for HIV. Yeah, a real setback, obviously. But from a national perspective, it shouldn't push back a vaccine rollout because, as we've heard from the federal government, they've, they've, they're looking at a number. They've got AstraZeneca, of course, which is connected to the Oxford trials. We have got uh, the Pfizer one as well, which is now being roll, rolled out for emergency cases in the United Kingdom and now the USA from Monday. Yes. So th this, unfortunately, is a setback back for the University of, of Queensland vaccine. But the Australian government has secured almost 100 million vaccine doses from three other sources. So it won't be a setback for the vaccine rollout in Australia. Um, it's just a setback for the University of Queensland. But this is a very innovative technology and it, it will be used in the future, I'm sure. We, they, we just have to find a way to overcome that the body is very reactive <laughs> and uh, is producing these antibodies to the HIV protein, which is part of the CLAMP technology. We know our older generation are vulnerable to this virus through the pandemic and those obviously with pre-existing medical conditions. You're currently trying to develop a COVID vaccine for the ageing population. Tell us about that. Yes, Tim, we are. At the Westmead Institute, there are two research teams working together. One research team that I'm leading and the other research team that Tony, Professor Tony Cunningham is leading. And we are developing a vaccine, which we call the second generation vaccine, which we would plan to roll out after this first generation of vaccines coming from Pfizer and other um, uh, manufacturers. And this vaccine includes a very essential part of the proteins that are part of the coronavirus. So we have identified very essential parts of proteins of the coronavirus that it cannot live without. And we're combining that with an amino stimulant so that way we can stimulate the immune system because as we age, our immune system doesn't work as well. So we're combining these protein fragments with an amino stimulant so that we can really develop a vaccine that should be more effective in those who are over 65 years of age. Um, as we age, our immune system does become less effective. So by including this immunostimulant, we really think this vaccine will be much more effective for those who are elderly. That sounds like great news. Professor, <laughs> um, pandemics don't come with crystal balls, but from an Australian perspective, do you think we've seen the worst? I think in Australia, this pandemic has been, held, has been managed extremely well. I think it's because there's consistent messaging between the politicians and the scientists. So if we look around the world, Australia and New Zealand have done an incredible uh, way of managing this um, pandemic. So I hope that we're near the end of the pandemic and <laughs> as these vaccines are rolled out, the pandemic will be uh, more managed even better. However, we do have to worry about May. So when we go back into our winter months in Australia, we have to be a bit concerned that we could see a, a small spike in this virus before the vaccines are totally rolled out across Australia. And that's the thing, isn't it? Because we can talk about when they're being rolled out and they're starting to happen in the United Kingdom and the United States, but the effect of the vaccine really doesn't come until a few months after the rollout happens. 
That's absolutely true. And furthermore, we need 80% of the population to be vaccinated in order to have effective immunity across Australia. So that will take time. And for some of these vaccines, such as Pfizer, which has to be kept at a very cold temperature, there will be logistic challenges. Not all pharmacies and, and small um, doctor's offices have freezers that can contain the, the Pfizer vaccine. So there will be logistic challenges. So we do have to be careful and maintain our social uh, preventative measures as we, as we go into winter here in Australia and until the vaccine is rolled out for everyone and 80% of the population in Australia. Well, let, let, let's finish with your message because this is your area of expertise. What is your message to the Australian population regarding this vaccine? So my, my message would be, hold on, the vaccines are coming and there are some very effective vaccines that are coming. So please hold on for these um, vaccines, but please maintain social distancing and mask wearing and hand washing until we have these vaccines available. I know the incidence of um, coronavirus is very low in Australia, but that can change because there are there is an asymptomatic phase of this virus. So please um, hold on, the, vi the vaccines are coming. Don't get <laughs> um, tired of having the, that you have to maintain these social, um, these social measures. And, and absolutely take the vaccine when they come? Absolutely. I'm planning on taking this vaccine. We do need 80% of the Australian population to um, agree to be vaccinated in order that for us to, to really protect the whole of the Australian society.